So there has been a little bit of an update on the AST Space Mobile versus Ham Radio 70 centimeter band recently. And just to recap on what is actually being proposed at the moment. So AST Space Mobile, they plan to use the 430 to 440 megahertz band worldwide for their telemetry tracking and command of their Bluebird satellites. Now, these frequencies are currently used by amateur radio operators worldwide for all sorts of uh, modes and operations, so satellite operation, repeaters, weak signal work, digital amateur television, emergency communications as well. Now, the first five Bluebird satellites already in orbit, they were launched in September 2024. And as I mentioned in my previous video that I did a couple of weeks ago, uh, there has been a lot of audience discussion and quite a bit of public outcry in the amateur radio community as far as the uh, proposal for them to utilize the 10 megahertz of spectrum in the 70 centimeter band for their worldwide communications. Now, if you watch my last video, you'd know that this started out as a proposed filing to the FCC. Well, there's been a little bit of a update in regards to it moving from, say, a proposal to an action and why this is concerning for amateur radio operators. So the scale of the response was quite massive. There was over 2,500 comments. This is huge as far as amateur radio standards are concerned. Uh, the opposition came from various different sources, from individual hams, from clubs, and also from at least 17 amateur radio worldwide societies, including the ARRL uh, and the Bulgarian Federation of Radio Amateurs, where they are proposing, I believe, a ground station for AST Space Mobile as well. So this is quite remarkable because of the cross-border uh, cooperation in the amateur radio space, because this it doesn't really happen um, or so fast, really, the advocacy between all of the societies. So they all submitted to the FCC to say that they all disagree with this proposal. So that just kind of tells you what the perceived threat level of the 70 centimeter band is at the moment. So this article has popped up on PCMag.com. This is talking about no interference, AST Space Mobile defends the use of ham radio spectrum. So this has just popped up in the last few days. And according to a letter that uh, Space Mobile has sent to the FCC. They are defending their use and their plans for the 430 to 440 megahertz band um, that we spoke about previously. Now, in this, their pushback on the opposition is claiming that the use will be very limited. They've designed their satellites to mitigate interference, very limited, non-routine, um, only available for launch and early orbit phases for its satellites or for emergency operations when other frequency bands are unavailable and that they can shut down the radio band uh, use if interference is detected. Now, in addition, they also submitted an analysis from RKF Engineering Solutions. Uh, this is an external uh, third-party report. So they're claiming that the risk of interference to amateur radio operators is to be extremely unlikely. And the modeling that they have put in is that the probability of interference is extremely small, less than 0.1% per pass, and only a handful of events were observed in a 30-day simulation in worst-case scenario conditions. So there are a couple of issues that I can see with this, and the first one comes to mind is AST saying that they can shut down their services if interference is detected, but that's only really going to be in the case of if AST Space Mobile detect interference to themselves, to their satellites. I find it very unlikely that they're going to shut down their services if they're interfering with somebody else, and you need someone to actually be able to police that and more on that later on. Now, the non-routine is also subjective. With 248 satellites, launch early uh, orbit events can, and contingency transmissions, these will all add up really, really fast. So the other thing they also mentioned was emergency use. Well, what constitutes an emergency? Who gets to actually decide what qualifies as an emergency if they're only going to use it in that particular purpose? I'm, I'm not quite sure on where they stand with that. And the other thing too is, is that simulations don't always match messy real-world propagation, so hardware quirks and also local stacking of signals. So there's just too many variables. They've just gone to this uh, company for an analysis and the company's turned around. Of course, the company that they've engaged to actually do this analysis has said, nah, you'll be fine, no worries at all, don't worry about the amateurs. 
So uh, I'm not quite sure about the PR spin that's going on there from AST Space Mobile. On the other flip side of the coin, there is evidence from the field that points to the fact that they have been interfering already and they have been operating. So uh, here, the AMSAT DL, uh, they tweeted out here um, about the AST Blue Walker 3. This was launched in September 2022 as part of their first few satellites that they have launched. And um, amateurs have been able to observe transmissions from Blue Walker 3 um, interfering as well and transmitting. And then all of a sudden, it got switched off. They seem to have suddenly stopped on the uh, 23rd of July 2025, transmitting in the 435.7 megahertz frequency, the amateur radio band. So there's been reports here too from Europe um, claiming that there's interference from the first five bluebirds Blue Walker 3 as well, as we mentioned. Um, so AST say that they're not transmitting in this band, but evidence suggests that they only stopped two weeks ago. Um, and this kind of, all of this just links into trust and transparency errors, uh, transparency issues. So once a company has approval, then amateur radio monitoring is pretty much the only watchdog in this. I can't see the FCC. I mean, do we expect the FCC to then regulate this worldwide and, and keep an eye on interference worldwide. I really can't see that happening at all. Now, with all of this, it will also set a bit of a precedence problem that we have. So if the FCC approves the global use of the 70 centimeter band AST Space Mobile without any international coordination or approval, um, it encourages the other companies to bypass ITU, IARU um, processes and coordination. It sets an example for future commercial interests as well and encroachment onto amateur radio bands. So, look, this pattern is not new. Large commercial players tend to try to carve up spectrums that other services have depended on. The usual playbook, and it goes something like this, they file for experimental or limited use in this sort of scenario. They then put the hardware up and they start operating. And then they argue, well, we're already operating. We're not causing any problems, so we should be allowed to continue. And then all of a sudden, you've got a done deal and you don't really have any leg to stand on, as it were. So a recent example was SpaceX's push to make use of Spectrum that other satellite operators relied on. Um, the exact same pattern uh, happened, filing, deploying, and then arguing for permanent rights. So if regulators allow just one company to dictate what they want to do without any tight international regulation or coordination, then every other operator will point to their case and go, well, you let them operate on that band. Why won't you let us operate that band? So it could just start with one company and then all of a sudden we've got multiple companies now operating in the same band. So the amateur radio bands could end up being carved up piece by piece. So that's kind of where the real important matter is and why precedence definitely matters in this case. Just also a quick shout out to Ham Radio Prep. They've actually been shouting this from the rooftops for the last few weeks, asking hams to step up and defend the spectrum. Um, they've been also putting out a couple of videos and posts like this on social media. If you're not licensed yet or you do want to upgrade, then Ham Radio Prep does make studying easy through their video lessons, practice tests, and their courses. They have courses for the technician, the general, and the extra um, license class, and they also have some various other HF Masterclass Baofeng course and a few others as well. So they also provide a guaranteed pass first go for your amateur radio license in the United States. So they've been really active in this fight and they've been supporting the community. Now for my viewers, Ham Radio Prep is offering 20% off all courses with the code HAMDX. So there is a link in the description below to support those who are supporting Ham Radio. Now speaking of supporting Ham Radio, the ARRL did file a letter to the FCC. There were a couple of highlights that I'll just point out in there and that was that they did say that this is an unprecedented international opposition to this proposal. 430 to 440 megahertz bands proven track record in emergencies and I'll just quote from the letter here where it says that at least 17 national uh, radio amateur societies from around the world took the extraordinary step of making their opposition known to the commission. Now, you can read the full letter from the ARRL and also AST Space Mobile that was filed with the FCC below in the description. Now, I just want to point out the claims that AST Space Mobile have said about very limited non-routine use of the band. So, 
even short duration interference can destroy critical contacts or experiments on the band. And in a recent SDR video that I did, I showed how we already compete with so-called low interference potential devices in the 70 centimeter band. Now imagine those same devices, but all of a sudden now they're up in space and they're running much higher power and a higher coverage area, bigger footprint. So the problem can really escalate fast. If you multiply 248 satellites and that limited, quick, routine interference all of a sudden becomes very regular somewhere on the planet. So what's going to happen next? Well, the FCC are going to review both sides of the coin, both sides of the argument. There's no public timeline that we know about just yet for a final decision. Um, AST is obviously pushing hard for approval because they're already using it, the evidence suggests. Um, so they want to compete with SpaceX's Starlink for director smartphone services. But one thing is for sure, the amateur community must stay engaged. Um, this isn't over, okay? So we haven't lost anything yet. We're still in the fight and we need to continue the fight for our spectrum. And how can we do that? Well, there are some things that you can do, some steps that we can take to take action. One of them is you could share this video out to raise awareness in the amateur radio community about this potential problem that we face. Um, you can also comment as well. Comment below. Let me know what you think. I'll tell you what I think to AST Space Mobile. Hands off our bands, okay? They're not available. They're not yours. It's not your spectrum. Go find some other frequencies that you can use in the commercial space. And if you agree with me, comment below hands off our bands. You can stay informed from societies such as the ARRL or your national society in your uh, particular country. You can also keep up to date with AMSAT as well. They are obviously posting a lot of the stuff on their social medias as well. You can share your monitoring data. So if you have any of that, then there is real documented evidence to say that there is interference happening if you have the capabilities to do that. Watch out for any new FCC comment opportunities because them opening up the comments for public consultation is your voice to talk about these issues. So um, act when they appear. You can also subscribe to this channel as well. I've been trying to keep up to date with developments and I've been also trying to keep you guys up to date with all of the latest and what's been happening. So if you subscribe to my channel, then you'll be able to keep up to date via any videos that I bring out on this particular issue. And there's been other also spectrum threats as well that I've covered in previous videos too. So there's always a chance to keep up to date via this channel. If you want to see the original video about everything that they proposed doing, then I did that a couple of weeks ago and you can view that over here.